What's up everyone, this is Alexis from Nitrous and Sour. Today we're gonna keep working on our ability system. So what we're gonna do first is just make a target lock to target the enemy we want to shoot our projectile at. And to do that, first off you want to go on the Epic Market and write target and just download this target system. It's free. It's free for everyone. Then you go in your plugin. The, the target system, you want to enable it in your project. And I'm, I'm going to restart my engine real quick. Okay, so I restarted my project. It's pretty easy with the plugin we download. All we want to do is uh, put the target system. Boom. And then we want to choose with which button we want to click. Let's say left shift. And on left shift press, you want to target actor with the target system. Good. And now if we put, um, I have an enemy, but the enemy is nothing. Like there's literally uh, no code in him. There's only a mesh with the same uh, with There's only a mesh with the same skeletal mesh as my skeleton, but uh, he has a anim blueprint with only an idol. There's he, there's nothing in it basically. All we're gonna do is drop him in the map, and if we try to if we try to lock on him, we lock on him. So it's, it's easier when we throw a projectile. Good, but now we want to make the projectile hit the enemy, basically. So we're going to go in the enemy and we'll start writing something. To have an enemy is pretty easy. You just make a character blueprint class. And then you go in the viewport. And in the skeletal mesh, you put the SK mannequin that sh that's your third person character has and for the material i just copy paste the same material and i changed their color so now it's a different look and i also created an animation blueprint for the enemy the animation blueprint is nothing it's uh, just an idol and the idol is not even uh, it's not even a blend space it's just an animation so that's that's just so we'll stay in place so now we'll start coding inside of the enemy okay so now that this is set up we'll go in our enemy blueprint and we'll start coding on the event actor begin overlap that's what that's what we got that's what we're gonna use so on event actor begin overlap we're gonna start by the toy branching and we'll create a variable that's called is alive we'll just check if our enemy is alive basically so put that as the condition if the enemy is alive we'll cast to our projectile because we need to see if the projectile hits the enemy so from the projectile we're gonna spawn an emitter at location because we're gonna put a little explosion where it hits. So let's just put a dot of lightning, but we want to put the dot of lightning where the mesh is. So we'll get the world location and we'll add a little vector because we don't want the blast to spawn in the middle of the enemy. So let's say minus 35 and uh, 110 so it's a bit higher and uh, on the side so it's gonna appear on his shoulder or something like that and oh, the next thing we forgot we just need to connect the cast projectile to the actor that's gonna overlap good now we want to create another variable that's called health for our enemy because we'll try to kill our enemy Look, health is a float and health is equal to one.
Now we're gonna set health and take how many damage our attack does. Let's say our blast does 0.4 because it's a big blast and if we test it we wanna quickly kill the enemy. And now we want to check if our character's health is smaller or equal to 0. So we can either make him take the hit or make him die if it's equal to 0. And in both cases, we'll want to destroy actor. Destroy actor. And the actor is the projectile. Okay, now if our life is higher than zero, then our character is not dead. He's only gonna take some damage, so we're gonna play anim montage of uh, the enemy getting hit. And if he dies, his life is smaller than zero. We're still gonna play an anim montage, but it's it getting killed. And we're gonna set is alive to false because he's not alive anymore. We'll put a little delay so the animation of him dying has time to play. Let's say 0.5, I don't know. And right after we'll set simulate physics. So we'll fall down and everything. And then we'll destroy him after a while because you don't want the enemy to stay in your map forever. So now technically it's gonna touch the enemy, disappear when it touch the enemy, blast the enemy and the enemy will take some hit but we don't have the animation yet so let me find some animation real quick. Good so I found this animation for the knock Boosh. and this animation for him dying, blast. So we're gonna enable root motion. And we're gonna retarget to our character, to our mannequin. So both our animation are retarget. Let's put them in our folder. Good, and we're gonna create a anim montage for each of them. So one is called die, one is called knockback. Here we put the knockback. Here we put the die. Everything should work just fine. All right, so I'm uh, totally sorry if we test it. It's not gonna work for a couple of reasons. First off, I changed this. Before we had the mesh and we added a vector, I just thought if we don't put a vector, but we just connect the projectile, we get the world location of the project time we spawn it. It spawned better at the at a better place. And the other thing we want to do is check the simulate physics box. And the third thing we have to do is the mesh needs to be ragdoll for the collision preset. And everything will work now. If we test it, it should take three hit for enemy to die. First one. Second one. And now he, he's dying. He had his animation, then the physics simulated, and he's disappearing. Everything is good. Last thing we're gonna do because it's an ability, we're gonna create another widget blueprint and just call it cooldown. So we're gonna show the player that there's a cooldown on his ability. So let's just put a text. It's really simple. We say cooldown. You, 
can download font. Last video I did it and I'm gonna use the same font we downloaded. Make it kind of really big. Don't forget to anchor it to your screen. And now we can just put the outline setting really, really big. And the other thing I like to do is put another text on top of this one. So the Z order is bigger than the cooldown. So if I put the text, if I move the text, it's going to be up front. And the text just reads something like cultivate yourself. So the characters, so the player knows that he has to gain some XP or something like that. So is a player is better, is a better player. I don't know, bro good so now we have something cool for the widget we don't need to do anything else just for the look and in our third person character uh, in our ability sorry Let's put that down right here because we said if we have more than one of our full uh, ability cooldown, we can cast the ability. So basically, if you cannot cast the ability, create widget from class. The class is going to be cooldown. And we're going to set visibility to on. And after a little delay we're going to set it back to off like it's visible then not visible good so now that we have our um, widget all set uh, we just need to go on the event tick and make sure that the widget can appear so we're gonna create widget from the class cooldown we're gonna add to viewport the widget but we're gonna always hide it set visibility to off and then when we click we're gonna set the uh, visibility to on so if we test it, we should have a full ability system. Now we have the cooldown. Whenever I click, it pops on my face. We have a target. Then I can blast again. And the character dies. Good, so that's going to be it for today. Uh, well, thank you everyone and have a wonderful evening.